Brothers and sisters in Christ, the rapture of the church is the next event to take place. So I forgot to explain the other part that I was going to explain on my other video called the Rapture Alert about the history of the church. God foretold the history of the Jewish people. He called Abraham. He told him that his descendants, the land that he sees, I'll give it to you and to your descendants forever. But he also showed John the history of the church. Now I want to go into this. Because many people don't understand this verse here. Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. This is what it says. Write the things which you okay, write the things which you have seen, which is past, and the things which are, which is present, and the things which will take place after this. After what? After everything that God is about to show him, which is the church age. Because after, if you go to Revelation chapter 3, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And after that, the church is no longer mentioned, because they're raptured in Revelation 4.1. Because listen to this. After these things, if someone were to read, if someone were to open up the Bible and just start reading from Revelation chapter 4, they wouldn't understand after what things. They'd be lost. Why well, you have to understand from Revelation chapter 1 verse 19. It is written in chronological order. So he says, After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me. Saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne sat in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a set of stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like in a, and listen right here verse 4 around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. This is definitely speaking about the judgment seat of Christ. Immediately after the rapture of the church, we're, we're going to be judged for a loss of rewards or a gain of rewards. But that's what I want to explain is in uh, verse, yeah, right here. Go to chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and you have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth then I looked and heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and stretch and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and that are in them I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So we shall reign on the earth. Wait, we sang a new song. Yeah, right. And we shall reign on the earth. That's talking about the second coming of Christ. So the church age is about to end because right now we're living in the church age and the church age is going to end with the rapture of the church and then this whole world is going to enter into the great tribulation, seven year period of tribulation. This is going to happen at the rapture of the church. But I want to say this about everything that's going on. The new world order is already in place. Everything is ready to go. Exactly as the Bible says. 
the Bible tells us world government is coming. And let me ask you guys this question. If you knew someone that can predict the future with 100% accuracy, wouldn't you trust them? Well, the Bible does exactly that. The Bible tells us that there's coming a one world government. It's going to come from Europe. The European Union is going to become so powerful that it's going to rule over the whole entire world. That's where the Antichrist is going to come out of, is Europe. You guys may laugh at this. You may make fun of it now because it doesn't look like it. Well, let me tell you. God's Word says it. Let me say this to you. You guys don't believe this. I'm going to say the same thing that Jesus said in His Word in John chapter 14, verse 29. I tell you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I'm telling you it before it takes place, so that when it takes place, you will remember that I told you beforehand. And there's another verse, I want to read this to you, in John chapter 9, verse 29, or is it 19? Yeah, 19. And they asked him, saying, is this, no, no, 13, sorry, 13, 29 or 19? Let me see what it is. 29? Let me see what 19 is. Yeah, verse 19. John chapter 13, verse 19. Now, I tell you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am He, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. This is prophecy. Prophecy is history written down before it takes place, and this is for sure to happen as if it's already present. It's like as if it's, it's like as if it's an event that already took place in history. That's how sure it is to happen. So Europe is going to become so powerful, it's going to control the whole entire world. Okay? This is what's going to happen. You guys may laugh at it, mock it, go right ahead. You guys aren't going to be laughing when it happens. And when it happens, it's not going to be you believing in it. It's going to be reality slapping you in the face. This should just show you that the Bible is true. Because the Bible is over one-third prophecy. Okay? And over 80% of Bible prophecy has already come to pass. Now, if that much of Bible prophecy has already come to pass, that should make any person think, hey, that is significant. I better pay more attention to what the book has to say. Because if that much has already come to pass, that should show you something. That no other book has ever predicted the future. Only fools tried. When God's Word says something, it is sure to happen, and it will be fulfilled. Not close, not somewhere around the bush. It will be fulfilled right on target to exact detail, right to the smallest letter. So, the Bible tells us there's coming a one-world government. Daniel chapter 7 says, He shall devour the whole world, trample it, and break it in pieces. And there's going to come ten kings over the European Union. Okay? There's going to come ten kings, and you can have the, G, the, the G20 summit. But talking about bringing in a new world currency for the whole world to come into. Because right now the world's uh, monetary system is crumbling. It's on the break of collapse. And we need a new thing. And by the way, for them to bring in a new world economic, political, financial system, the system that we have now has to fail. It has to go down. It's going to deteriorate within the upcoming months. You're going to see it happen. All the world's economies are going to collapse. As the Bible says in James, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Even the gold is going to be no more good. It's going to be useless. Guys are going to come up with a new system. And isn't that funny that the Bilderbergs are talking about bringing in a global ID cards. Global ID cards. Biometric. And uh, maybe they're going maybe they're going to bring in a new government for Europe. Will be ten groups, ten groups of people. Will be the ten kings. That's how it's going to become so powerful by these ten kings. Because everything is on the everything's on the stage right now. Like yeah, Pope Francis is calling for a one world religion to unite humanity. That's the only way that we can do it. And that's what's going to happen. The Pope is going to be playing a big role in bringing this whole world into a one world government with a one world religion that will go along with it in a one world church but I want to I want to say some of this stuff because I don't know I don't trust uh, what's his name Glenn Beck 
people are listening to Glenn Bank, I don't know about him. Because I'm going to explain why. Because this guy was making fun of Alex Jones, okay? About the FEMA camps. Because before on his show, he's like, oh, the death camps. This is supposed to be a death camp, a FEMA camp, blah, blah, blah. He was laughing about it. He was making fun of it. And then, after he had some people on his show, he's like, yeah, these are FEMA camps. I want to debunk these FEMA camps. So the person like, these are FEMA camps? He's like, yes, these are FEMA camps, okay? These are FEMA camps. And then the next couple of days after, he comes on his show, he says, oh, there's no such thing as FEMA camps. Well, why was he saying a day before there was FEMA camps? And a couple of days after, he came on and said, there's no FEMA camps. It's not true. Maybe he was threatened. And because he's a Mormon, okay? Glenn Beck is a Mormon, okay? And the Mormons are part of the Freemasons. They're part of bringing in a world government. That's why I don't trust the guy. Maybe he's told to say this information that he's saying about the Boston bombing. He's told to say this stuff. And there's certain stuff that he's not allowed to say. Maybe it's all scripted. Who knows? But I want to talk about this Boston thing too. This all ties into the one world uh, government. Because they create a crisis so they come up with a solution. Like, you see how easy it was for them to get the military on the street? So imagine when the whole economy comes crashing down, what's going to happen. And plus they've been training for this and this and this and that. And plus those two kids, I don't know if those two kids are uh, responsible for it or not. Because the father is saying that they're not. He said, my son is innocent. If, if my son ends up dead, hell is going to break loose. So who knows what that means. Maybe they're going to call it another terrorist act or whatever. But I'm saying this because there's actual people that said that they saw, they saw Navy SEALs. On top of the roofs, okay? They saw Navy SEALs on top of the roofs, and they saw people with detonators. And maybe those two, uh, those two kids, whatever, I don't know if they're kids or men, right? well, whatever they are, maybe they saw them, so they became a threat. They weren't supposed to see what they saw. So now they're being targeted, because they don't want their plants uh, exposed. And plus, I don't know, I understand this thing about uh, President Obama. There was this Muslim. There was this Muslim guy that went to the White House, and Obama says that they were talking about uh, Syria. That it's a bunch of bull. It's a bunch of bull. That's what people are saying. It's a bunch of bull. Maybe it is. You can't trust the guy. Like, come on. If you want me to trust Obama, show me your birth certificate. Show me your social insurance number. He's a fake birth certificate. He's from Kenya and uh, he's Muslim. Because he was bowing down before the the Muslim guy. That's all that he is. He's Muslim. Henry Kissinger. Listen to the source themselves. Henry Kissinger, the, the Nobel Peace Prize, he's a Bilderberg member. He's a top high ranking global elitist. He said that we have elected Obama at this time in history to create the new world order. You see? And Obama is the hope of mankind. This is Henry Kissinger. That's what he said. So that makes, what does that tell you? Obama was not elected by the people. He was elected by Kissinger, the global elitist. That's why he's been elected. He didn't do all the stuff that he had to do. Like, what he's done to America is really bad. But wait till he's done his, uh, the end of this term. America's not going to be recognizable anymore. This guy, Obama, he's invading countries. He's killing innocent people with these drones. And he did fast and furious, putting, bringing guns into Mexico, and all this other stuff. He has a brother that's star starving in a certain country. He's not even feeding them. Like, this guy has done so much damage, it's, it's not even funny. It's not even funny. Anybody that stands in his way ends up dead. That's why they want to go into total control. Because they want to go into internet censorship. So he can't say whatever. Because it's, it's all going to be censored. They said you're going to have to thumb scan to go on the net to protect people from hacking into the system and everything. It's all about control, tracking, monitoring. These people are going, these people are crazy. Like I said, absolute power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And what else did I want to say? Yeah, that's all that it's about. Like Henry Kissinger says, we must forge ahead or retreat to chaos. So if we don't have a world government, we're going to live in chaos for the rest of our lives. So we're going to look to a world government as our savior. We're going to create a crisis, and everybody's going to freak out, and we're going to throw this on them, and they're going to accept it. Even David Rockefeller said, we are on the verge of a global transformation. All that we need is a major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order. And they say, we need a world bank for the world to come into. So for that to happen, you need a one world currency. And you need to destroy the rest of the banks of the world. Which the, the banks are going to collapse. The nations are going to collapse. It's all going to happen very soon. So this is all I wanted to say. And uh, this is it. This is Bible prophecy coming to pass right before our eyes. 
So this is all I wanted to say. So for my brothers and sisters in Christ, be ready to meet the Lord, because Jesus is indeed coming very soon. And uh, God bless you all.